Pacing is an alternative to another way of living with CFS and fibro known as push and crash, which is explained in the next video. Pacing involves understanding your limits, adapting to them, and then gradually extending them as allowed by the body. Pacing offers the possibility of a more stable and predictable life and gives you a sense of managing your illness rather than the illness controlling you. Pacing has three parts. Finding limits, adapting to limits, and extending limits as tolerated or as allowed by the body. So first you define your limits, second you adjust your life so that you're living within them, and then third you may be able to expand your limits uh, over time. So let me say something about each uh, beginning with uh, the first one. When you think of limits, the first thing that may come to mind is that because of CFS or fibro, you have less, less energy and are able to do less. So you have limits in the area of physical activity. So let me put that down as uh, the first item under finding limits. Limits in physical activity. That means things like bathing and dressing, cooking, housework like cleaning and doing the laundry, shopping, driving, standing, exercise, and work for those who are able. But you have other limits as well, for example, limits in mental activity, that is activity that, activity that requires concentration, such as reading and working on the computer. So let me add that to the list here. Mental activity. <laughs> A third category is social activities, the time you spend interacting with other people in person, on the phone, via email, and so on. So another category is social activity. And then there are three other kinds of limits. One is vulnerability to sensory overload, which includes sensitivity to food and other substances, including medications, vulnerability to noise and light, and sensitivity to weather and the seasons. So I'll put that down as sensory. Next is emotions. Experiencing feelings takes energy. For example, if you feel frustrated at how little energy you have, that frustration will take some more of your energy. If you can find ways to reduce the drain caused by, um, uh, by some emotions, you can free energy for productive use. And lastly, let me add stress. Stress can take a large amount of your energy, so reducing stress is a high priority if you have CFS or fibro. In later videos, I'll explain how you can define your individual limits in all these areas. So moving on to the second element, the second part of pacing is adjusting your life so that you live within your limits. This is a gradual process, usually taking a period of years and involving the use of multiple strategies. I'll explain more than a dozen pacing strategies in later videos, but for now let me say something about the approach you'll use to adapt to your limits. Pace, pacing is based on acceptance, which is not the same as resignation, so let me put that down here. Acceptance, not resignation. Acceptance means acknowledging current limits while working to expand them safely. We sometimes use terms like acceptance with a fighting spirit or combining acceptance and hope. Some people are helped by using phrases like, these are my limits for now, implying that things can change for the better in the future. Acceptance is not easy because it means coming to terms with loss and the average person with CFS and fibro functions somewhere around 25% of normal. Let me give you a quick overview <clears throat> excuse me, of the benefits you can expect from pacing. With consistent pacing, you experience lower symptoms. So let me put that down under benefits of pacing. I'll use the less than sign to mean lower, lower symptoms. Just as symptoms are worsened if you go outside your limits, you can reduce them if you stay within your limits. 
Second, by staying within your limits, you avoid swings between push and crash, giving your life stability and predictability. So I'll abbreviate that just as stability. With predictability comes confidence that you can make and honor commitments. If someone invites you for dinner on Saturday, for example, you can say, sure, I'll be there, rather than, well, <clears throat> I'd like to come, but I won't know until Saturday, maybe around uh, noon or early afternoon, whether I can make it. Predictability gives you control, the sense that you were in charge of your life, rather than living in response to your symptoms. So let me add control to the list of benefits of pacing. Also, you're much, you're likely to be much more productive. So another element is productivity. Some people think that because pacing means staying within limits, it means that you get less done. But if you avoid spending lots of time out of commission because of push and crash, you'll have more time to be active and get more done. So productivity is the last benefit I'll list under adapting to limits. <laughs> so on to three, extending limits is tolerated. Many people who pace consistently find that their limits are reduced and they can do more without intensifying their symptoms. And this is another reason why pacing makes people more productive. They can expand, safely expand their activity level. There are two keys to being able to do more safely, that is without triggering higher symptoms. The first is to extend limits only a little bit at a time. Typically, this would be something like 5%, and I'll note it that way down here, 5%. But for some people and for some parts of your life, it might be even less. <clears throat> the second key is to return to your previous level of activity if extending your limits increases your symptoms. So I'll put that down as return if, and I'll use the greater than sign in this case, if you have an increase in symptoms. So this third step is best phrase, phrased as extend your limits as allowed by the body or extend your limits as tolerated by the body. You may wonder how quickly you can improve if you use pacing. Let me be honest, progress with pacing is gradual. If you pace yourself perfectly today, you won't wake up tomorrow with perfect health. And if you feel symptom-free tomorrow, I suggest that you don't act like your pre-CFS or pre-fibro self. That's not at all likely to work. Improvement with pacing is slow and requires patience. A good rate of improvement is 1 to 2% a month. In saying that, I intend to convey a message of hope. Think about what that rate of progress means over a year, about 20% improvement. The average person with CFS or fibro is housebound. With a 20% improvement, that person can leave the house every day and even hold down a part-time job. So I hope you're ready to begin your pacing journey. We'll start with more about push and crash, and then go on to defining limits, adapting to limits, and safely ex extending limits.